And now for today's Bible question. Today we have been learning about Jesus dealing with those who opposed him, wanting him to perform some sign. Someone might ask the question, why doesn't God just give us signs so we can believe him? Jesus said it was a wicked and adulterous generation that sought after signs. God does not need to prove himself to us with magic tricks to impress us. The fact is that even if we saw some great miracle take place, we could still reason it away as something besides the work of God. See how the Pharisees treated Jesus when he performed mighty signs and miracles? They said it was not God, but it was the devil doing it. We are often deceived into thinking that miracles are the most convincing way to bring about faith in God, but it is not so, and many scriptural examples could be given to prove this. When miracles occur in the Bible, it is always at a time of national rebellion and departure from God, and is God's way of dealing with his disobedient children. God is not pleased that our faith is so weak that we need some special miracle to cause us to trust in him. No father would like his child seeking proof or a sign to convince of the sincerity of his words and promises. So we should not show a lack of trust in God by looking for special signs. God has used miracles and signs at certain times to a disobedient and unbelieving people but would rather treat us as loving children who believe his word and do not need extra signs to support our faith. God's word should be sufficient for anyone to understand the mind and will of God and to direct our lives. Someone might ask God to show them a sign so that they can make the right choice to do this or that. However, it would be better to look carefully at what God has already spoken in his word and use that as our guide and standard to make our decisions. God may not send you a personal note, email, or phone call or miraculous sign to direct you in your particular decision, but he is fully able to speak to our intelligent minds when we carefully read his word and look for those passages that teach us important principles related to the decision we are making. For instance, if a young person is trying to decide which career to follow or which person to marry, no need to ask God for a sign, but rather read about these things in the Bible that relate to a person's work choices or marriage choices. And with diligent searching and prayer, anyone can be guided to find counsel from God in his word to help them make choices that agree with the will of God. It is far greater to trust in the sure word of God than in miracles and signs, for even the devil can fool you with signs. But a sincere pursuit for wisdom in the word of God is the way in which God can and does guide us. Jesus said, A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Matthew chapter 16 verse 4